So I had somebody suggest that I go on chat GPT and ask it a bunch of hamster questions and see what its answers are. If you don't know what ChatGPT is, it is a AI chatbot that allows you to have human-like conversations that can answer questions, assist with tasks, compose emails, and even code. ChatGPT has become pretty popular and a lot of people will ask it questions to get answers, but I think the one thing that's important to remember is that all it's doing is just searching through the internet and it's pulling answers and it's kind of learning in that sense. So just because it gives you an answer doesn't mean it's necessarily correct. There actually was an entire case about this where a lawyer asked ChatGPT to pull up specific cases um, for something and the cases that ChatGPT gave him were not even real. So the lawyer did get in trouble. Um, so I wanted to see how well is ChatGPT going to answer hamster questions? Okay, so the first question we're gonna ask it is, what hamsters can you own in captivity? So it says, number one is the Syrian hamster. Number two, dwarf hamsters. So it says Robrowski dwarf, Campbell's dwarf hamster, and winter white dwarf hamster. It doesn't mention anything about Chinese hamsters, which is a another species that you can own. <laughs> what about the Chinese hamster? Because <laughs> you forgot about that one. Oh, apologies for the oversight. <laughs> the Chinese hamster is indeed another popular. I just I'm I'm smarter than ChatGPT, I guess. <laughs> is indeed another popular hamster species kept as a pet in captivity. The next question I'm gonna ask it is, are hamsters good pets for children? Hamsters can make suitable pets for children under the right circumstances. However, there are essential considerations to keep in mind before getting a hamster for a child. I do, I do like that answer. Age and responsibility, adult supervision, regardless of a child's age, adult supervision is crucial when children interact with the hamster, this ensures the safety of both the child and the pet. Fragi fragility? Is that a word? I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> Hamsters are small and delicate animals and rough handling can cause stress, injury, or even death. Thank you, chat GPT. <laughs> Time commitment. Children must understand that hamsters require daily care, including feeding, cleaning, and providing enrichment. Nocturnal nature. Hamsters are nocturnal. Yes, they are. Allergies. Some children may have allergies to hamsters or their bedding. Emotional preparedness. It's crucial for children to understand the emotional aspects of pet ownership, including the potential loss of a pet due to their shorter lifespan. I love all of this. This is a good answer. I like this one. The next question we're gonna ask is, what is the best cage? for a hamster. The best cage for a hamster is one that provides ample space, proper ventilation, and various levels or hiding spots for the hamster to explore and feel secure. When choosing a cage, consider the following factors. Okay, one, size. Hamsters need enough size to exercise and roam. A cage with at least 360 square inches of floor space is recommended for dwarf hamsters. Where? and at least 450 square inches for Syrian hamsters. This is interesting. I wonder what website it's pulling this from. I know 450 square inches, that minimum came from the hamster hideout form, but it doesn't exist anymore. I don't know where it's getting the 360 for dwarfs. It's it. See, this is interesting. It's literally just pulling information from like various websites and putting it together. Bar spacing, ensure the cage bar spacing is appropriate for your hamster species. Um, avoid cages with wire floors, a solid bottom cage with a shallow tray is ideal. Why, why a shallow tray? Ventilation, proper airflow is crucial to maintain a healthy environment. Accessories, the cage should have room for various accessories such as an exercise wheel, tunnels, hideouts, platforms, and chew toys. These provide enrichment and keep your hamster mentally and physically stimulated. Escape proof, make sure the cage is secure and has no gaps or openings that could allow the hamster to escape. Fair enough. Multi-level options, ah oh, gosh. Hamsters enjoy climbing and exploring, so a multi-level cage with ramps and platforms can be an excellent choice. I feel like it means like multi-level as in like, like this multi-level, which is like a big no-no. Those cages are just, they suck for hamsters. Hamsters 
don't need cages like that. They need cages with a lot of floor space and depth for burrowing. Bar chewing. Some hamsters are notorious for chewing on bars. <laughs> I wonder why. It's almost as if it's a stress and boredom behavior. If your hamster exhibits this behavior, consider an aquarium styled cage or a cage with metal bars that are coated with a safe chew resistant material. <laughs> I don't, that second answer is, that's something else. Next, let's ask how much bedding does a hamster need? Hamsters require a significant amount of bedding. All right, so that goes against when it said shallow, shallow pan, okay. <laughs> to create a comfortable and stimulating environment in their cages, bedding serves multiple purposes, including soft and cozy surface, to burrow and nest in, absorbing moisture and order, odors, and offering opportunities for digging and foraging. The amount of bedding needed depends on the size of the cage and the type of bedding used. As a general guideline, you should aim for a bedding depth of at least two to three inches. The de this depth allows the hamster to dig and create tunnels, which is a natural behavior for them. I don't know about you, but typically an animal that is already two to three inches long itself can't really make tunnels or burrows in two to three inches because it's the same height as them. It does say avoid using cedar or pine shavings as it's harmful to them. Um, it does say remember to clean the cage regularly, spot cleaning areas with soiled bedding and changing, no, and changing the entire bedding once a week or as needed. All right, now let's ask, can hamsters live together? Let's see. The ability of hamsters to live together depends on the species. Syrian hamsters are solitary and must be kept alone. On the other hand, some dwarf hamster species can tolerate living in pairs or small same-sex groups. Dwarf species that are more likely to coexist peacefully include Campbell's dwarf hamsters and winter white dwarf hamsters. These species are social by nature and may enjoy companionship when introduced correctly. It's like half, right? So purebred Campbell's dwarf hamsters are like the only species that really could work out in same-sex pairs. Winter white dwarf hamsters are definitely like solitary. Um, and shouldn't be housed together. And that's one of the reasons why hybrid dwarf hamsters, which is the majority of dwarf hamsters sold in pet stores in North America, um, and majority of the world, that's why we don't recommend housing them together because they are hybrids. And so they are going to contain a little bit or you don't know how much high winter white they contain. And winter whites typically shouldn't be housed together. Next, we're gonna ask, are hamster balls safe? Hamster balls, also known as exercise balls or running balls, are plastic balls that hamsters can run. How many times did it say balls? <laughs> can run inside while also their movement is confined. The safety of hamster balls has been a subject of debate among hamster owners and experts. Here's some considerations considering the safety of hamster balls. Physical safety, hamster balls can be hazardous if not used correctly. There is no correct way to use a hamster ball. It's gonna be dangerous no matter what way you use it. Heat and ventilation, when a hamster is inside a ball, it relies on proper ventilation to breathe. Um, if the ball does not, okay, if it has not enough ventilation, they can't breathe, but if it has too much ventilation, their paws can get caught. That is that is the, the struggle. <laughs> Stress and anxiety, some hamsters may find being in a ball stressful, I mean, most hamsters find it stressful. Supervision, if you decide to use a hamster ball, always supervise your hamster. See, that's like the issue. Most people use hamster balls because they don't want to have to supervise their hamster and they want them to stay safe in an area. But if it's saying here, like you should always supervise them on a hamster ball, then at that point, just get a playpen and supervise your hamster in the playpen. And that way they're actually going to be able to explore and get enrichment out of that activity. The last question I was just curious about, and I'm not expecting it to have any answer, but I want to ask it if it knows me. Who is Victoria Rachel? Victoria Rachel is a popular YouTuber and content creator known for her videos focused on animals, particularly reptiles, amphibians, and insects. You know what? It's pretty close. <laughs> She gained a significant following on her YouTube channel where she shares education and entertaining content related to caring for various exotic pets, animal husbandry, and showcasing her collection of animals. I mean, I don't like that word. I don't like showcasing her collection of animals. I don't collect animals. 
Victoria's channel provides valuable information for pet owners, enthusiasts, and those interested in learning about a wide range of creatures from around the world. I don't know how, it's not really that wide of a range, but okay. Her videos often cover topics such as habitat setups, feeding, handling, breed breeding, no, <laughs> and general care tips for various animals. Oh, well, I mean, they were close. I had a reptile at one point. I, I don't anymore. It, I love that it didn't mention hamsters at all. And that's like my, that's my thing, but okay. <laughs> so that should just tell you that chat GPT shouldn't be trusted 100% and that it's important that when you're doing your research, you are actually going out and finding the sources for this information. That's the thing I don't necessarily like about ChatGPT. You can ask it any question, but you're not gonna know like, where did this come from? You know, who's saying this? Because it's not necessarily gonna be correct. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.